Sunday they will come from Hebrews 11 and 6. Hebrews 11 and 6. It reads, and without faith it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. You may be seated. All right. Amen. They all talk about believing isn't necessarily seen. Believing isn't necessarily seen. Um, <clears throat> I like going to movies, but rarely I get to go to uh, the movies I want to see because uh, I really don't have time. But the time I do go, I go with my wife. Go with my wife. And I'm telling you, I'm kind of like a sci-fi action thriller kind of guy. And my wife is kind of like a, um, uh, how would we say it? Um, romance. Romantic, romantic comedy kind of girl. And uh, every time we uh, go to movies together, I find myself going to see the movies that she want to go to. Now, if the movies get a little bit too girl and too corny, I have a daughter to send her with her. Go check the movies out. But you see, I, I never get to see the movie. Sometimes I try to sneak off to see the movie, but it's kind of hard to do But because I'm a schedule. So I get to catch all my movies on pay-per-view. Pay-per-view. So I get to kind of call with some movies the other week, and uh, I came across this movie called The Gray, who I wanted to see in, in theaters. The Gray. The Gray. Okay. And I want to sit here and talk about this movie this morning as I, 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 I talk to you guys today. And, and The Gray is about a... Uh, um, a movie. <laughs> if you haven't seen, I'm about to tell you about it. The Greg is about a movie starting with Liam Neeson. Is that it? Yeah. The, 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 yeah. Yeah. The, the guy that was in Taken. Yeah. Everybody knows that guy was Taken. But uh, he was starting this movie. The movie was about a group of men that was in Alaska, and these group of men was like roughnecks. They were like ex criminals, fugitives. Uh, as a matter of fact, he called them men unfit for mankind. Okay, in this movie, his name was John. John, played by Neil Le 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 Liam Neeson. Uh, John was pretty much the star of this movie. And John was the guy that kind of, they hired him to protect the workers from the wolves in Alaska. Well, in this movie, the plot set up by these men going across Alaska, going to work, and it was a plane crash. And, and during this plane crash, seven men survived, including John. And the plot surrounded these men uh, in survival mode uh, uh, against the elements of the wilderness and the snow and a pack of wolves. A pack of wolves. <laughs> now, at best, at best, if you ever see the movie, to me, at best, it was just an all right movie. At best, it was just an all right movie. But during this movie, certain quotes, Certain questions that was a, that was raised by by John in this movie was something I think most of us would ask ourselves when we're in our own wilderness, our own darkness, our own battle with our enemy. Certain questions that was raised, and uh, uh, I don't know if this movie was a another movie that was another Hollywood movie to kind of kind of test our faith to see if God is is, is really real or not, or. I don't know if it was another movie to see, to show us how bad man looks when we doubt God. Mm, listen. Either way, anytime there is someone trying to get you to make God seem unreal, mm. it's even a better reason to know how real God is. All right. So I want to talk to you about a few things today, and a few things I want to talk to you about about pleasing God. Believing God and seeking God. Pleasing God, believing God, and seeking God. Once again, I won't be long. Our pastor gives us a sitcom theory, 30 minutes or less. So I'll be out today. The first one, go to the script, it says, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Now, if it's impossible to please God without faith, we've got to understand what way is faith. We've got to understand what is faith. What is faith? Faith actually comes from uh, verse 1. The definition of faith comes from verse 1 in the same text. And uh, I'm going to read from the uh, Amplified Version. I'm also reading from the uh, NLT to make you understand, to try to get you to understand what faith is. Uh, faith is, it says, now faith, Amplified Version, now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, 
being the proof of things we do not see. Okay, the New Living Translation says, what is faith? It is the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of the things we can not yet see. He says the faith is the confidence and assurance of what we hope for is going to happen. It is the evidence of the things we can not see yet. So in other words, it's like a footprint. Although we see the footprint in the mud, we don't see the person. But the evidence from the footprint print shows there was a person there. That's right. Okay. The evidence we cannot see. It's like looking at a painting. Knowing that we don't see the, the artist, but the evidence from the painter know that there is an artist that made the painting, even though we don't see them yet. Okay. It's like looking at a creation. Knowing that we don't know what the creator looks like, because it's creator, creation, we know there has to be a creator. Right. Faith is a gift from God. Okay. Faith is something we can't do on our own. <coughs> it's something God gives us. It's a gift That's right. to help us make us Believe. So let's go back to the movie. In this movie, at the end of the movie, John found himself the last person standing. All the guys had died off, and he was by himself. And he said in anger, and he was cussing out God. And he said, God, do something. He said, God, I need you now, not there. Then he said, God, forget it. Forget faith. Earn it. He told God to earn it. But let me back up about the details of the movie. Let's start with the beginning of the movie. And uh, why did, uh, uh, I gotta ask my question, uh, question, why did John ask this? The beginning of the movie, we found John with a gun in his mouth. I'm gonna tell you the movie. Gun in his mouth. He has a rifle in his mouth about to kill himself. About to kill himself. Because he was depressed from the uh, passing of his wife, okay? Then after that, when he was about to kill himself, as soon as he was about to pull the trigger, a wolf yelled out loud, howled out loud. Now for some reason, it caused John to put the gun down. And then after that, they get on the plane, the brothers go across, across Alaska to, uh, to uh, go to another job, and the plane crashes. Out of all the workers, seven men survive. <coughs> and when the seven men survive, may I not, and may I add this, none was injured, just only bump, bumps and, and, and views and scratches. And then not only that, John saw day after day, each man that was with him die, either get devoured by wolves or just die on the journey, Till he got to the last day. And then he sat down and uh, 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 listened all, all, all the time and it was encouraged by a poem from his dad and what his wife told him to not be afraid that kept him going day by day. Then he has the dad to sit down and say, earn it. Do something. And I shot it to the screen. I thought to the screen, I said, God did something. He did something when he took your wife when he could have took you, John. I said, John, he, he did something when he made the wolf howl at the, at, at the precise time to make you put the gun down, John. He did something, John, in the plane crash. It was only seven men survived and you was one of them. That was a miracle, John. He did something each and every day you saw these men go down and you were the land one's last one standing, John. He did something to remind you of the spirit of encouraging word from your, your dad's palm and your, and your, and your, and your wife's words to saying, don't be afraid. He did something, John. But how many times have we sit down and said these same questions? You know, how many times? I know I, I want to say it before. You know, uh, 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 I need something now, God. Yeah. How many times we told God to earn it? Yeah. How many told, times we told God or wanted to tell God, I need something, do something yeah. now? Mm -hmm. Let me tell y'all something. He did something. Mm -hmm. He did something when he took your mother or your dad and he could have took you. Oh, he man. did something at the time. He, had, he put a flat on your tire, nailed hit your tire. I know you was late to you, but guess what? You missed an accident that could have caused you your life. Your yeah. I know you. I know you. He, he did something. He did something when you was trying to commit suicide, but it wasn't enough pills for you. But when you were about to jump off a bridge and pull the trigger, somebody said something to stop you. He did something each and every day when you see people around you die and you still living and standing. He did something with, with Big Mama, Granddaddy, your mom and your daddy gave you encouraging word to go through life every single day. He did something every single Sunday when the preacher brings the word to apply in your life. He did something. 
He did something 2,000 years ago. That's right. He did something already. He earned it. Mm. He took his only perfect <coughs> and gotten son to die for something we did. Make it plain. Oh, he did it. something. He earned it. But the thing about it, we don't recognize it because we don't recognize it. It's not his fault. It reminds me of the, of the joke. You know the joke when the, the guy was in, in the ocean, his boat was sinking, and he was surrounded by sharks. Yeah, yeah. You know, he said, God save me. I'm trusting in God to save me. So a man came in a helicopter, and the helicopter guy said, grab my hand, I'll save you. He said, no, I'm trusting in God. And then a boat came, he said, jump, I'll save you. And the guy said, no, I'm trusting in God. So his boat went down, he got eaten by sharks. He died, he went to heaven. And he said, God, I was waiting on you to save me. And God said, I sent a boat to the helicopter. <laughs> it reminds me of that joke. But the thing about it, we don't recognize it. He didn't recognize it. The thing about it, we want to see faith. See faith. And it says it's impossible for you to see faith because this has to do with believing. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to show you how you can see faith. I'm going to show you how you can see faith. The Bible says faith is the conviction based on past experiences. The conviction based off, based off past experience. You know how you can see faith? Right there, plain in your eyes. Look back. And see what God has done for you in the past. Look back, not only for what done for you, but what he done for your neighbor, what he done for your friend, what he done for people you don't know. Look back and see what he done for them. It's based off past experience. The only reason, matter of fact, I, say, I, I look out in the, the, the pew, the seat, and you know that just about everybody sits in the same seat every Sunday. There's nothing wrong with that. Sits in the same seat. But you know why you're so confident to sit in, 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 in that seat? Because you trust in the seat. You have faith in the seat. Now, if last Sunday you came and that seat fell down, you wouldn't sit in that seat anymore. Yeah. But based off the past experience that that seat always came for you, came through you, from you in the past, you sit back down in that seat. That is faith. Look back on your past experience. Amen. All right. So we're talking about pleasing God. Let's talk about believing in God. Okay. It says because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists. He must believe that there is a God. He must believe that there is a God. Let's go back to the movie. John was saying in the middle of the movie, he was saying that uh, they were discussing around the bonfire, and uh, he said that, uh, sorry, he said that, uh, he said, you know, I don't believe all this God stuff. I don't know how real it is. I just don't believe all that God stuff. He said, now, I believe what I see. He said, this, the trees are real. This cold air is real. This stuff coming out my mouth is real. The wolf that's trying to kill us, that's real. Everything is real. He said all this God stuff, I don't know if it's real. But the thing about it, everything he said, just explain God. Just explain God. Because God made it all. God made it all. Let's go to this, go to this text with me. Romans 1 and 20. Romans 1 and 20. Romans 1 and 20. And I'm going to read this from the New Living Translation. I don't know what it's going on. So 796 when you have church Bible. 796. Miss Joyce, I'm not going to wait on this time. <laughs> but Romans 1 and 20, I'm going to read from the, the, the New Living Translation. It says, from the time the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky and all that God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature. So they have no excuse whatsoever <coughs> for not knowing God. In other words, we have no excuse whatsoever for not knowing God. All we have to do is walk outside. That's right. And we see everything that God has created. But the thing about it is we recognize it. Or do we give the credit to somebody else? Yeah. If it's a nice day or big tree, we say we give the credit to Mother Nature, not God. If we see something else that amazes us, we give credit to man. I mean, we look at Mount Rushmore. And really, Mount Rushmore, if you look at it, it's an incredible structure that's made by man. But the thing about it, we miss the structure that was made by God. That's right. The big mountain that Mount Rushmore actually sits in is more incredible than the little small structure that was made by man. But we miss it. That's like looking at the top and the peak of an iceberg. The reason why it's called the peak of an iceberg is because it's just a peak. But underneath the water, there's much more of the iceberg that keeps the iceberg up. That's like looking at LeBron James does a nice score of 45 points and was considered the best 
one of the best playoff games in NBA history and did not recognize who he is and what he did and say, you know what, I really like this tennis shoe. <laughs> we look at the small things versus the big things what man has done. But I'm going to tell you, it's just so eager. It's so easy for us not to believe in God. We are so eager not to believe in God. Yeah. We're eager not. It, it can take one person, one incident, one atheist to get us not to believe. It's so easy. And God has to do all this stuff every single day just to get us to believe. But just one incident. We say, oh, forget it. I don't believe in this stuff. We can go, I've been to a church one time, thousands of members. And somebody I went with ran to one unruly member and said, that's why I don't go to church. Because of people like that. But they forgot the thousand other people that was friendly yeah. to them. Yeah. And it's so e easy. I mean, the thing about it, we don't have that problem at work. I don't know nobody in here don't like that don't like keeping at work. But we still go to work. I don't know one people that didn't have a problem at the club, you still go to the club. I don't know one person that didn't go to uh, some kind of athletic event and didn't have a problem with somebody in the stands, but you still go to athletic events. This is the only thing we have a problem and say, you know what, we're done with it. We're done with the other. It's easy for us not to believe, but let's go back to the movie. Once again, near the end of the movie, John yells, show me something. Show me, and I'll believe it to the day I die. What John was doing is negotiating. What we do is we say, you know what, show me something, God. I believe, I believe in you to the, to the day I die. Show me something. That's negotiating. When we negotiate means I got something you want and you got something I want. Mm -hmm. When negotiating is, is that uh, I'll give you this if you give me that. Mm -hmm. If we're negotiating for a job, what we're saying is, look here, you give me $50,000, I'm giving give you this for your company. Mm -hmm. That is our big problem. We really think that we deserve it. We really think that we are worth it. We really think that God really needs us on his team. <laughs> really. We, we really think that. We think, God, you know, we, you need us on our team. But I'm going to tell you something. Uh, God said, I don't really need you. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't even need you to praise me. Mm -hmm. You don't praise me the rocks on the crowd. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. Matter of fact, this is how God even looks at us. And we don't look at ourselves. We look at ourselves as something great. God said, you know what? Matter of fact, because of your sin, I look at you as a... Dirty rag. Do you know what a dirty rag is in this verse compared to? It's compared to the cycle rag of a woman. When a woman is on her cycle. A tampon. A cotex. Matter of fact, a cotex is huge. And how y'all looking right now? It's really how God should look at us. But that's not how we look at each other. That's not how we look at ourselves. Everybody look in the mirror and think we all look good. We all got it going on. But God said, mm, he's looking at it just like y'all looking. That's how it looks. But the thing about it, we go out to a store and we see a, a shirt with a spot on it. We put it aside and we buy the clean shirt, the spotless shirt. But God did this. He said, I seen the shirt with the smeared, dirty cycle rag and I bought you. Not only bought you, I bought you real great cost. That cost cost me everything. But as long as we look at ourselves as just, you know, when we got it all together, you know, it's what I am so easy to love. You know, as long as we look at ourselves, we can't look at God how, 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 how God's supposed to be looked at. We're like the kid, the little sorry kid on the street that always think he's good. <coughs> He thinks he's fast than everybody else, but he gets last. He thinks he can play basketball, but he gets he, he gets he gets slammed off. He thinks he can play football, but he gets ran by every play. We like that sorry kid, but then he goes in the house and says, Mom and Dad, how do you play? Oh, I play great, Mom and Dad. That's how we are when it comes to God. That's how we are in life. So we're talking about pleasing God. We're talking about believing God. Let's talk about seeking God. Uh, the verse says, and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Uh, other other version may say sincerely or diligently seek him, but it says rewards those who earnestly seek him. How do we earnestly seek somebody? Well, it's like a a serious quest to get to know somebody. In high school, there was this girl, don't tell my wife, but there was this girl who <laughs> came into the room, these big pretty eyes, and these nice tight, nice, nice tight jeans. And I had a serious request to get to know her better. A serious request to get to know her better. I had to know her dislikes, what she liked, what she didn't like. By the way, this is my wife. Their likes, her dislikes. But how do we get to know 
a person? How do we get to know someone? How do we get to know? We got to know their likes, their dislikes. It's about having a relationship. Yeah. About having a relationship. So how do we sincerely seek God out? We got to know what he likes. We got to know what he dislikes. And we got to dislike the same thing. We got to like the same thing. That's how we seek them out. Matter of fact, it's, it's more than just believing in God. The Bible says even the demons do that. Matter of fact, when John said, you know what, God? Show me something. Earn it. And I will believe in you to the day I die. And if anyone says this, what we are basically saying is show me something, God. Earn it. And I will be like the demons. To the day I die. Big deal. To seek God is not just believing in God. To seek God is doing what God tells you to do. To seek God is being on the same page as God. To seek God is having a relationship with God. It's more than just believing in God. It's doing what God tells you to do. It's being obedient to God. Then it says it rewards those who who seeks him, who earnestly seeks him. How did he re reward people? Well, in the movie, uh, John said he was frustrated. He felt that God didn't ask him. After all this, he was frustrated. And so uh, he told God, forget you. I do it myself. And so John got up. And about 20 minutes later in the movie, John found himself in the middle of the wolves' den. In other words, he was in the middle where the wolves hung out. And I'm going to tell you, when we find ourselves saying, God, you're not doing it, forget you. I do it myself. We find ourselves in the middle of the devil's feet. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the wolves are sitting there waiting on saying, I got you where I want you. So when we do it ourselves, what we're saying is the devil is saying, you know what? I got you where I want you. I got you where I want you. But what is the reward? The reward is this. The reward is being at the right place at the right time. So in other words, when we're obedient to God, doing what God wants us to do, it doesn't matter we're in a mansion, it doesn't matter we're behind on our rent. We're in the right place at the right time yeah. where God wants us to be. And that's the reward. So if you find yourself uh, 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 physically unable to believe in God because you don't see God. I mean, you don't see Him. It's hard to believe. You go outside, you see the trees. You see the air. You breathe the air, you see the grass, you see the ground, you see canyons. Matter of fact, I remember uh, Gennaro saying he went to the uh, the Grand Canyon, and he said he was so amazed. Matter of fact, I'm going to try to do that in some. He was so amazed. He saw God, because that was God's creation. And I don't know how many people I've seen that seen the Grand Canyon and said, you know what, there is a God. I've seen it. It's just amazing, the creation. Okay, Jesus, I don't want to say that. If you see all this and you don't believe God, maybe... Maybe you'll, you'll, you'll never believe. You know, maybe maybe uh, it'll be impossible you believe in God because you'll never believe there is a God. Okay? But it's always a chance. Every day you live, you got a chance to get it right. Yeah. Every day you live, you got a chance to get it right with God. There's always a God. But the tragic thing about this movie is that at the end, I'm about to tell you about the end. At the end, <laughs> John and the Alpha Wolf got into it in the wolf's den. And it showed at the very last ENG, if you let run the last tape, that you see the wolf taking his last breath. He killed the alpha wolf. He did. But at the same time, you got to take for granted, although he killed the alpha wolf, it was like about 100 other wolves around. So you got to understand that John died also. So the tragic thing wasn't that John died. It's that John died not seeing light. John died not seeing what God did in his life. John died not knowing Christ. That was a tragic thing. And today, or any day, you have a right to get it right with God. To get it right with Christ. You have, a, you have a chance to see God each and every day. Each and every day. And like I said, Grace, I'm not going to take up any more of your time. I think I've